Give me back my slippers. I'm the only one that knows how to use them. They're no use to you. Give them back to me. Give them back. Keep tight inside of them. Their magic must be very powerful, or she wouldn't want them so badly. You stay out of this, Glinda, or I'll fix you as well. Oh, <laughs> rubbish. You have no power here. Be gone before somebody drops the house on you too. Very well. I'll bide my time. And as for you, my fine lady, it's true, I can't attend you here now as I'd like. But just try to stay out of my way. Just try. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. <laughs> Welcome to Kermit Uncut. Last week, I tweeted as I was on the way to work, I'm off to see the wizard in 3D. And then I said rather sarcastically, which is great, because I always liked the Wizard of Oz, but I always thought, you know what? It looks a bit flat. As I'm sure you know, the Wizard of Oz has just been reissued in an IMAX 3D digital print. They've gone back and they've restored the image and they've blown it up to an IMAX screen the size of a house and they've added on stereoscopy as is now pretty much a prerequisite. And I saw the film and a number of things happened. The first one was that I was won over by it once again. Like everybody else, I've seen the Wizard of Oz probably a hundred times. Most people now know the Wizard of Oz off by heart by the time they're five because of the miracle of video and DVD and Blu-ray and now cinema reissues but just to see it on a great big screen was a terrific thing the songs work the performances are great the special effects are astonishing even when they're blown up to a size when you can really see the flaws they still work as far as the stereoscopy is concerned you know I could I could really do without it it was rather soft and that was good because after a while I just forgot about it but The Wizard of Oz is never a film that needed anything to immerse you any further in, in the drama it was already completely immersive I didn't need 3d to do that but I live with it why because I hadn't seen The Wizard of Oz on a big screen in a really long time. And when it comes to IMAX presentation, it's pretty much the biggest screen you can get. Now, if you're a regular here at Uncut, you'll know that for a long time I was arguing that 3D wasn't the future. In fact, what was happening with IMAX was more of the future. We, we don't need stereoscopy. We need proper, big, high-definition screens. And I think there are some problems with IMAX, but oddly enough, 4x3, you know, old square frame motion pictures look very good on that screen. And what's really interesting about The Wizard of Oz is that the print has been cleaned up so much, they've gone back to the original negative, that you can really see details that before were rather mysterious. You're probably aware that there's a famous story that you can see in one of the sequences, one of the uh, people working on the movie hanging themselves in the background as Dorothy and her chums go off down the yellow brick road. Well, now seeing it on a screen that big with absolutely crystal clear definition, you can see that's not somebody hanging himself, that's a large bird stretching its neck and wings. And in fact, after a while, I just gave in and enjoyed the fact that I was watching The Wizard of Oz on the biggest screen imaginable. And it made me think of this. If you could have any film that you've seen, you know, whether on a television screen or an ordinary cinema screen, any film at all, blown up to IMAX size, what would it be? Which film do you think would really benefit from being absolutely enormous? Because the fact of the matter is that not everything looks better, bigger. But in the case of The Wizard of Oz, and for all my reservations about the stereoscopy, I really liked seeing it that big. How about a little fire, Scarecrow? Oh, 